My name is Dr. Susanna Banerjee. I'm a consultant medical oncologist at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London. It's a privilege to be the track chair for gynaecological cancers at ESMO 2018. And the most um, significant finding reported um, in gynaecological cancers were the results of the landmark study SOLO-1. So, uh, to give some background, um, uh, SOLO-1 is a uh, randomised, the first randomised phase 3 trial, um, which was double-blinded, placebo-controlled, of a PARP inhibitor in the first-line, front-line setting. So this study um, involved 391 patients that were enrolled and they were randomised to receive maintenance salaparib or placebo um, and they carried on the treatment for two years. So what Dr. Katie Moore um, presented earlier um, today, and I'm privileged to be a co-author on the Solo One um, team, um, was that the, there was a significant improvement in progression-free survival with a hazard ratio of 0 0.3, so a 70% improvement in pro progression-free survival. And we haven't seen such dramatic results um, in the frontline setting. So this is really a landmark study, and I very much hope um, that this will uh, fundamentally change the uh, way we treat women with newly diagnosed BRCA mutated ovarian cancer. So just to highlight, this is for women with BRCA mutated ovarian cancer. And why this area is so important, we know that PARP inhibitors, uh, multiple PARP inhibitors have approval in relapsed ovarian cancer, but here we have the data in the front line where there truly is an opportunity to increase overall survival and potentially cure. So we need to wait for the overall survival results. Um, and I think this trial highlights again the importance and the need for robust, robust measures um, and uh, of uh, access to BRCA testing for women with ovarian cancer. So the theme of ESMO 2008 is um, access to medicines and it's really important um, that our patients get access to the latest groundbreaking research to improve um, outcomes. Um, and one of the key factors from the SOLO-1 trial um, is uh, in highlighting the importance of access to BRCA testing and having a result in a timely fashion so that women can actually start this treatment in the frontline setting. Other challenges which are um, uh, relevant for all new medicines and, and new treatments is of course cost. We know these drugs um, are costly, um, but it's really important for the authorities to balance the improvement uh, and, and the um, improvement in outcomes um, with, uh, with cost. And I very much hope that we'll be able to access um, elaparib in the maintenance setting and the frontline setting for women with BRCA mutated ovarian cancer. Some of the things to look out for um, is uh, a couple of other trials that will be coming out in the next year or so because one of the questions is whether there's activity of PARP inhibitors just like what we've seen in the relapse setting but actually taking that in the frontline setting. Uh, and there are two trials to look out for, the PRIMA-1 study that is looking at maintenance niraparib and it's not limited to just women with BRCA mutations but also those that don't have BRCA mutations. So we'll look forward to seeing those results. And also the PAOLO-1 trial um, which is looking at the addition of, of, of bevacizumab with elaparib um, uh, and because as you know uh, bevacizumab is standard of care in the front line setting for, in many countries as well. So these are things to look out for and we really need to know the challenges of integrating new treatments into the patient pathway.